Hello, and welcome back to Bombchu. I'm Austin, and today we'll be looking back at my top five games from 2018. Ninja Theory proved at a time when AAA and Indie rule supreme that AA is still alive and should be taken very seriously. This game has gorgeous visuals, an incredible story, a super interesting look at Psychosis, and the thing launched at a nice $30. Even purchasing at full price, that's damn impressive. The gameplay isn't incredibly deep, but it gets the job done, as the main draw is the experience as you join Senua on her journey through madness and hell. So this remaster of a game from 2006 actually came out on PS4 in 2017, but the PC port arrived this year, so it counts. This game pulls a lot of its systems from its MMO predecessor, Final Fantasy XI. Battles happen in real time and on the field with no transition, as enemies aggro you, similar to the Xenoblade series. You choose what moves to do, go on hunts for strong notorious monsters, etc. However, where this game really stands out to me is the Gambit system. Your party members can be programmed by using gambits. You can set your healer to only focus on removing debuffs if everyone is over a certain health threshold, or to start buffing people up if no one needs healing. And it goes much deeper than that. If you've ever had party members do something dumb and thought, what the hell, they should have done this instead, you can make their AI work exactly how you want. And when they run out of MP halfway through the battle, you'll realize creating good AI is a little more detailed than you might have thought, and you can keep tweaking till it's just right. It's super cool and part of what got me into programming. I just wish they'd bring this system back again someday. Not everyone has a VR headset, but if you do, Beat Saber is a must-have. It's a rhythm game where you hit notes with lightsabers. Yes. It starts off pretty easy, but it can get devilishly hard, especially when you start getting into the user-created levels, which you absolutely should do since the base game only comes with a handful of songs. Not much else to say about this one, it's a ton of fun alone or at a party. Just make sure you aren't drinking or you're likely to barf. It just came out, but it's already one of my most played games this year. Is it a lot like the last Smash Brothers? Yeah, but there are a ton of tweaks that make it feel different, and there's actual single player content now. And damn, it's hard. Not to mention every fighter is packed in, along with some really awesome new ones. I used to main Mr. Game & Watch, but Simon has been pulling me away. The online also finally works. Well, most of the time anyway. Well enough that my friends have been playing online pretty much every day, even tethering on our phones during lunch breaks at work. And damn, portable controls that don't suck. It's a delightful package that will have me glued to my Switch for a while. It's rare these days that I find a game that I can just bury myself in for hours at a time, much less every day for weeks. This isn't just my most played game this year, it's my fourth most played Steam game ever. And I have a lot of Steam games. Monster Hunter can be hard to get into, the movement is very deliberate, a lot of things don't get explained, it's a tough nut to crack, but lordy, once you get inside to that delicious gooey center, you just can't get enough. It's this perfect balance of grind combined with great skill-based combat that go hand in hand. Fighting a monster that just hits too hard? Fight something a bit weaker to make better armor and weapons so you can survive. Then learn the patterns and habits of the monster that was kicking your ass until you're taking it down like it's nothing. Stats help, and skill helps, but you need both to conquer new enemies. This newest entry also trims the fat in some great ways, making menus easier to navigate, though they aren't always perfect, while also maintaining a lot of the depth the series is known for. Oh yeah, and turf wars are cool as hell. The only thing this game is missing is Bracadios. Maybe he'll show up in the Iceborne expansion? Game of the Year 2019 contender? <laughs> 